Forge the Narrative. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Forge the Narrative. My name is Paul Murphy, your host. I'm joined tonight by Chris Morgan and Ricky Addington. How y'all doing? Please stop buying Rohan models so I can get mine. <laughs> <laughs> it is not time for our April Fool's Lord of the Rings podcast. It's going to happen. Listen to me. I don't know if you guys go to like the GW website regularly, but everyone in the world apparently is constantly buying all the Lord of the Rings toys, and I can't get them. So stop buying them long enough for me to get an Aomir. Just I, I don't need to buy them. I've, I've had them for years. Yeah, we're all bandwagons. You, you've been playing this, this game forever. Now, like, my whole area is, like, just jumping on, and we can't get anything in it. This stuff is sold just, out all the time. I, I need to enjoy this right now because I remember three <laughs> years ago on this very show getting flack from Paul and Justin about – you only people that, play the Lord that of is not you changing. And your dad. Now it's you, your dad, and Ricky. <laughs> yeah, uh huh. You're like, so full of it. <laughs> I feel like I, I. This is vindication. Yeah, it's soaking it in. Man, it's. I'm excited about that. That's great. I mean, it's it's kind of annoying. It's one more game I have to play. It's like I don't I don't have a choice now. It's like I'm in it. And it's all because of uh, Nova Open. I messed up and drunkenly told my friend, yes, if you buy all of those Nazgul models, I will play this game with you. And he did it, and now I'm, I'm no, in it. Obligated. You're I'm uh, morally obligated, because I ain't no liar. Well, <laughs> way, way to keep your drunk promises, Ricky. I'll keep that in mind the next time we hang out. <laughs> On the Facebook page, we started posting kill team list today, like we mentioned from the last couple of shows. We're going to do that a weekly thing. And people can send in their, their their kill team rosters, things that you're having success with, things that were things that were fun to put together and paint. I uh, want to keep that going. This game is is very popular. It's very popular around where, where I live, and, and it's nice to see it it uh, being experienced and played other places as well. It's huge, man. I mean, like it, it's kind of crazy. It's, it's to see kill team communities, entire kill team communities that aren't necessarily the 40k communities, you know, like people who don't play 40k are playing kill team, and that's great. Well, you know, we mentioned this a little while ago, but people are can now like socially identify as I'm a kill team player, and not just a 40k player who sometimes plays Sigmar or sometimes plays Necromunda or whatever. You are a Necromunda player. You're a Sigmar player, and these games are now fully supported. It's, it's really cool to see. It's coming from, you know, seeing the different eras of things that come through, see specialist games kind of flow in and out and whatnot. Uh, it's really cool to see them just full press supported. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would love to be able to say that I'm I'm a Battlefleet Gothic player again. Hint, hint. <laughs> come on, guys, don't leave me hanging. Uh, I, I, I want it too, not. Ricky. What should I say is no. all in on that. There's a lot <laughs> out there. Well, see, it's easy for us to like be somewhat wistful about the stuff that's not here, but we've got a lot of stuff right now. I mean, yeah. you mentioned going to the GW <laughs> website and look at the top tab. There's it's full of all things manner yeah. of ways to entertain yourself. And let's be honest, like. It's a full time job if you're going to play all of these games. Like, I mean, I, 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 yeah, I'm saying, yeah, give me, let's get Battlefleet Gothic going again. But I'm going to be honest, guys, I'm tapped out right now. Like, I'm, I've got a Stormcast Eternal Army I'm redoing. I've got my Rohirrim I'm doing. God knows how many uh, 40k projects I have sitting sitting here. Uh, so it's as much as I want Battlefleet Gothic, let's let's pace ourselves a little. I, I'm well, let's, let's just like put Ricky on that Kermit the Frog meme, like the Kermit Dark Kermit meme, where it's like yeah. Ricky, don't buy new models. Other Ricky, buy new models. And like when you have the keys to the store, that you can just go get it. <laughs> I've painted several kill teams. I'm really just Ugh. the the basically to be able to switch up. Oh, I really want to paint this today, or I'd like to paint these six guys today, and not and not be kind of trapped into well if i want to start this new army i've got to paint all this other stuff yeah kill Although team I is did. so great for those, a hobby add those 30 plague bearers in in one in two days oh i'm so happy with that and my rodigus uh, i shared it on twitter and, and thanking people for the encouragement and people were, were very encouraging about liking the finished model and i painted the demon rodigus has he's got one hand forward like he's casting a spell and from that hand, there's a demon erupting from that. And it's it's kind of difficult to determine which tentacles are Rodicus's, like fat drip tentacles, and which are the internal demon busting out tentacles. 
So I chose to go with the scheme that anything that looked like it had a tear in the skin with a tentacle coming out, that was the demon tentacle. It's kind of gross, man. Like, I'm going to be honest. The I don't demon. even like hearing about this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's more Nurgle. <laughs> well, I use, we'll start the hobby segment now, but we'll, we'll talk about the army list and FAQ stuff in just a little bit. But I use the uh, the Night Haunt Gloom. That's the blue specter paint, mm-hmm. ghost paint. It's more difficult to use. Uh, it's less difficult to use than Nihilus Oxide, but way more difficult to use than, say, Null Oil. <laughs> <laughs> Now, talk about splitting hairs. Where where is our on our pH scale? So do we do we put nylex oxide at seven, <laughs> or or is null oil the the seven? Way and to make it go, dirty, we, Ricky. <laughs> yeah, which way do we go there? Um, you know, I at one end of that, let's say the zero. Well, zero no is zero like bad is zero toxic. <laughs> Yeah, if you go, I gotta zero, look up the pH scale. Yeah, zero zero fourteen is no boy. No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess let's just go zero to ten. Uh, you know, zero being easy. We got our null oil, right? right like null oil. Null oxide is. I mean, it's up on the the six six and a half. Yikes. Okay. It, it's tough because it's um it's got a it's got a texture to it. Yeah. It doesn't. You can't just wipe it on a model and it's not going to uh, settle and do its thing. You know, you're not, yeah. you're not going to get a lot of transparency from it. And I don't really like, this is personally, I don't like the way it looks when it's just slapped on a model. Yeah. And that's, I think, I think there's this, there's this idea that people have because I think when I first started using it, I had it in my head too that you could use it like a wash and just throw it on there. But you want to be more discriminate, uh, discriminating with where, yeah, you, it could turn into a chalky mess, essentially. Yeah, yeah, it really can. This yeah. kind of gritty, weird, chalky mess. And so let's just say that that's the, it's the hardest to use. Great, it's a great color. And you can use it for lots of things, including ghost up into the Nighthawk Gloom. Nighthawk Gloom is probably a degree easier because the Nighthawk Gloom, in my experience, will settle a bit and work a little bit more like a wash. But you still, you have to really be sparing with it. And then you've got to go back in and dry brush or paint over the flat areas to really get that look you're, you're going for. All right. So I painted that internal, the busting out demon with the Nighthawk Gloom and then went back in and I dry brushed white. And you can't tell, Ceramite white, a lot of pigment in that color. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there, there's quite a bit. It's one of my like most difficult paints to keep good well, for a long yeah, period yeah. of time. I'm going on an aside here, but if it, if it dries that quick on the palette, it's drying that way in your brush and it will jack your brush up. So you got to keep it. It's a, it is the best coverage, the brightest white, in my opinion, out there. And this is, I've used a lot trying to find this like perfect bright white for what, for my miniatures, the way I like to look. And Sarah, my white does it, but you got to keep that brush clean, keep it moving and don't. You better, yeah. you better shake that pot up too, like regularly. <laughs> You, you, you tell you what like I every time you're walking by your desk, not even yeah, seeing yeah, not like, and not, guys, not not every time you paint. Every time, just before you leave the house, you know, <laughs> go kiss your wife, put your car keys in your wallet in your pocket, shake your ceramite white, and go to work. And that's <laughs> that's, that's because, solid advice, Ricky. That, it, that may yeah. be the best advice you've given on this show. <laughs> can, can, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. I don't know if I don't know if this is genius or if it's the dumbest thing I ever did. But my Liberator Gold kind of had the same situation, but it separated to the point where there was like this silver layer and this orange layer. Complete. Like I could not. Sh- I shook it and shook it and shook it. Couldn't get it to mix back. Finally, I just took it down in the basement, took out my Black & Decker, uh, you know, the sanders, the, the ones that vibrate. Yep. You put the, took that, took the sandpaper off, held it to it, and turned it on, and held it there for about four minutes. <laughs> Beautiful. Could have driven to the store and gotten the paint by that. Uh, I don't think <laughs> I'll, but that would have been given up, Ricky. You're, you're not a quitter. <laughs> yeah. Mama didn't raise no quitter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she let me quit soccer. I didn't like that. Uh, everything but, but soccer. Everything <laughs> but soccer. Yeah. <laughs> so with but the it, with the night gloom, 
then dry brushing this ceramide white got a really cool spectral effect with almost zero effort. You, so you do have to babysit the Nighthawk Gloom a little bit, but it, it has enough consistency where you can work it into the crevices pretty easily. And then that, that dry brush coming over that, that surface, it doesn't like a dry brush at all. I mean, I went heavy with it enough to dry brush in to the point of uh, going past just a light dusting I'm talking about. It's it's pretty coated, but it didn't get in any of the uh, the recesses. It gives it really get nice spectral effect. And I'm really happy with how the, the Greater Demon turned out. It's a challenging model in a good way. There are so many details on it where if you did not want to paint all those details, you could easily phone it in. You'd still have a nice looking model. Yeah, there's so much texture there that, you know, just, just the wash would would help with, you know, it would it would do most of the work for you if you just do a wash on it. But well, like, You know I use Ethonian Camo Shade. Well, yeah, I mean, there it is. Yeah, sponsor. <laughs> Hashtag Ethonian Camo Shade. No, we do have we have a sponsor where you could also get Ethonian Camo Shade <laughs> that I'm going to talk about <laughs> later on. And please hit them up at, when, when we talk about them. Did the same thing I did with the with the Plague Bears. But the Plague Bears, you know, again, I told you, I'm really so impressed. Just blew through them in, in a couple of days. This was like throwing on the brakes. And it got me thinking about how to clear your head how to, when to, when to tap out, <laughs> you know, essentially, yeah, you know, we talk yeah. about giving up, but this model, sure. uh, it, it has so many things on it to where if you are really just want to dive into it, it's there, it's on the model. It would be an, an awesome project for someone to do, um, or you could do less and it'd still look great because it's a great sculpted model. That seems to be the way with, with almost all of just the Nurgle demons though, really, like when you, when you think about it, you can, you can do as little or as much with almost that entire range it seems like and with washes and stuff the the way the models look you you can you can get away with a base coat and a wash and you're almost good you know and then you can go in and do the craziness like i mean when I, your your uh your plague bears, they what they got like the the what the pinkish purple arm the the super cool like obsidian that's, looking sword that's and, Kerberg crimson okay is so that's the, a, that yeah. on the hand the scratching yeah. hand as i call it <laughs> It is scratching it. Scratch it is is just Caribou Crimson. It just yeah. the product did it. Yeah, it's it, it, but that little bit of extra work makes them look. I, I think they look great. I, I, Thank you. I kind of I kind of had this uh, with with JP. You know, he's everybody should know who JP is or Justin Pizzafrato. He's you know he does the battle reports and stuff with you. But uh, that uh, may be the first time they've heard his last name right on the show. Oh really? <laughs> I, th- I think I think Paul's favorite is Pizza Ferrata. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Pizza Ferrari is one of my favorites. Uh, uh, but, that's uh, a good one. Um, so now just, everyone oh, knows who he is. Yeah. Okay. So so JP makes fun of makes fun of me for playing Sigma all the time. He's pure 40k player. Well, he's he's over at the shop one day, and um, we're playing Sigmar, and he's looking at my Stormcast, and I'm bragging on how like I spent all this time like in all these layers of paint. Like my my Stormcast, my gold recipe is like five layers of paint, <laughs> and I mean it is it is. A lot. Dude, what are you and doing? Retribute armor is a, a, one of those miracle paints. Okay, so yeah, it, it, don't don't get me through the whole thing. I'll start. I'll go like the way you talk about Athonian camo shade. I will talk about my gold recipe. All and right, it, now it is amazing. time for finishing moves, people. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're not we're not doing it. But the what was funny was I showed it to him. And I was all proud of it. He goes, uh, "You know what, Ricky? Had you not told me that, I would have thought that this was just gold." And <laughs> You know, it was like it was like one of those things where it's like, oh, you know, that's crushing. I hate you, but <laughs> <laughs> it, it it brought it. It, it kind of made me think about it, and I like so when I started painting my new Stormcast, I I literally did Retributor armor wash, and then I did a few dry brushes over that to bring it back up, and I was like. You know what? He's right. That that works. <laughs> that's that's it such the me. worst. It saved I'm, I'm, me. Thank you for taking us on that journey, yeah, Ricky. It saved me like ten hours of gold painting, and I was just like, I hate you. I was I was just cussing him the whole time I did this. <laughs> like I just sitting there painting hey, when gold. He's right, when he's right, he's right. He's right, but he, you know. <laughs> And luckily for me, he's very modest, and he's not modest. He's going to remind me of that for years, but <laughs> there it is. So the FAQ is out. People have had their reactions to it. Oh, did that come out? It did. <laughs> it did. And it's it's changed some things. Now, it's easy for us to focus on the stuff that may have impacted us, things like fly in the charge phase. Yeah. Can I can That's I preface I'm gonna preface everything here with other than other than fly, which hurts my heart from a realism standpoint, I feel like the rest of this fact was great. I, I thought they really did a lot. 
and, and like tone down a lot of the ridiculousness out there. I'm very happy with the FAQ overall. I wish I hadn't just started Harlequins, but other than that, I'm very happy. It was, it was targeted directly at like functionality of the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and play. Well, I mean, and there's, there's a lot of subtle little changes too that are still going to end up hitting people uh, e- even further down the road, I think, with, with how this FAQ is going. Yeah, could, I mean, could be. I said this as far as like changing list and stuff. He, you know, as Blood Angel players, uh, having the Wings of Fire stratagem changed, double a one hundred percent increase in command points. The game itself for the Blood Angels and things that relied upon what I consider a couple of different stratagems to be successful are now able to possibly get those off a lot more frequently and not be so scared of running into agents effect. You know, I did a lot of thinking about this stuff because uh, some of the armies that I plan on taking to tournaments, got a tournament coming up, a big tournament coming up at the end of the month, probably just take Yanari. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been thinking a lot about Blood Angels. I'm bringing Yanari to uh, the next tournament. Well, yeah. what I, well, it's what I'm planning on. Although I've been really happy with this other Blood Angel list I've been running. But the, where I'm going with that is when I'm planning a list that I take to tournaments, I think about what is my realistic chance of winning every single game. And if you plan on doing that, then you have to you start ruling things out. Well, I can't take this because I'll run into this. I can't take this because I'll run into that. And it always like top of the list is well, I can't take this because I'll run into agents of Vec. Every then I'll, I'll just be blown off the table because my my one trick that I telegraph from a mile away mm-hmm. will be stopped. Yeah, I'm. What's funny to me is. I'm looking here for my codex, you know, as a night player, I'm looking, oh my gosh, one, two, three, three stratagems got bumped up. And I'm sitting here looking at them. I'm like, you know what? I'm actually happy about this because <laughs> it doesn't hurt a pure night player nearly as much as it hurt, you know, the dreaded smash captain with, with the, the loyal Castellan 31. And Gar- oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah, I had not 32. seen that before until recently and I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. So there's, there's all these lists that were almost abusive uh with command point regeneration and all this stuff that they're effectively done well that's they're, they're that's not it's a great point because you you start to think to yourself well i'm shortchanging myself because i'm not taking this thing and that that's not great for diversity and for mm-hmm. army list and it's and that's the thing is like uh in the, exactly, because you were you were penalizing yourself by not taking some sort of engine. Like you know, we've been talking about like command point engines, like getting command points, getting command points, and now all of a sudden that that has gone like come off the table. We can't we can't do that anymore. Now all of a sudden it's not nearly as uh, disadvantageous to take a different army. So all of a sudden, pure imperial knights isn't isn't guaranteed to be shot off the table. Uh, turn by turn two, you know, from uh, a, a, soup, a souped up Castellan list. So now all of a sudden there are other armies that can compete. There's there's other things out there that stand a chance. And I mean, I still don't think Blood Angels are sitting pretty by any measure. We, <laughs> that I feel like, and I'm, I mean, I'm going to be honest. Like, I think no, you know, no, you're completely right. Like, it's- yeah, but but Death Company all of a sudden now are on the same equal footing as everybody else. They're coming in turn two. Uh, they're not well, going to have, still have a lot of learn trick. fury. You know, there's yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. was just about to say like the, I think death company are, are, are better for the fact that they're, they, they don't really redeploy. They move in advance for free before the game starts. And right. then you can do your movement and, and you're charging. I, I think the forlorn fury now is almost better than upon wings of fire. Now, the, yeah. the wording for upon wings of fire, it, it doesn't talk about reinforcements at all. So, um, I mean, there's the, with the clarifications to the FAQ and how aspects aspects scan and things work. When, when you take something like Forlorn Fury, that's not something that can be intercepted. That's not something that you know, like from aspect scan or from Inari. Uh, the the problem I have still with Death Company is just the points per model is still a tad too high. I feel for what they're designed to do. Now they're they're excellent chaff clears who die right after they kill whatever they charge. But when you're talking about charging, say, the Loyal 32 or a squad of Eldar Guardians or insert cheap screen unit here, you're not making your points back for what they're doing. So a number number of things changed or or were clarified, however you want to take a look at it, uh, where that have opened up some of the list, the, the, the list building options. So now with things being able to, you can't jump over things in the charge phase, where you end your move and how you end your move is a lot more important. 
So things that do get extra moves or ways to move more than greater distance or more than once or redeploy in turn two or whatever, that's all a lot more important. Uh, then we've got things like the, the command point change. Can't generate as many command points as you were before, so you're not obligated to take something that does that. Everyone's a little bit more on the equal footing while people are still uh, getting the benefits of, of the uniqueness of their codexes or whatever to some degree. And then you've got prepared positions for two command points. All right. Well, super. Since since, since I gra- griped about stuff in the FAQ, I have to give props for prepared positions. Uh, I, I really feel like that's a an excellent stratagem, and it's definitely worth the two command points that you spend on it. Uh, just being able to, to position yourself out in the open, you, you can play a little bit riskier. Granted, I mean, it, you're always going to be safer if you're out of line of sight, right? But to count as being in cover wherever you are on the table for two command points. I think that's that's excellent. I, I think that when we we don't know anything about orcs yet, but I have to imagine some battle wagons it's, to cover is going to be good. It's going to be so good yeah, for orcs. Yeah. Um, it yeah. can't not be great for orcs. I, I uh, also I, like um, hemlocks with prepare positions. Oh, jeez. Shut, Shut up. Storm Shut up. with prepare <laughs> positions. So we want to talk about models that aren't earning their points back. Where everybody's ready to shoot down a knight. Gosh, bring yeah, bring, well, in, bring in anything big like a storm raven. Just whew. I was uh I was looking at prepared positions and I was hating it. I was like, well, that's stupid <laughs> because it's like my knights can't have it. So. A talk hemlocks with a prepared. Yeah, you already what minus two <laughs> minus two to hit two plus armor save. <laughs> It'd be fine. It'd you be always pain. just keep circling back to how Eldar got better. <laughs> it comes back to that, doesn't it? Well, you're not taking Shining Spears. You might as well take Hemlocks. I mean, that's what I'm saying. That was in my ATC list. The best you <laughs> Oh, isn't that the truth? Didn't didn't single and and here's the thing, Chris. Chris can Chris is going to back me on this, Paul. I know you're probably just going to laugh at us, but do you think? Because uh, I think that single codex armies just got a little better or overall got better. Well, when, when you can give a, a powerful stratagem that lets people, because really the problem with some of the stuff, and I, and I don't, by the way, I also don't think shining spears are, are, are wallpaper. I think that they still have a lot of move and you can do things like quicken them. And it's, they're still really good. Soul birds. They're still good. They're yeah. never, they're never. So, I'm good. kidding. I'm kidding about that. If you were taking what were considered, it, let's say a less optimized, because that's the thing. When when competitive players, they look at your army list, one of the first things they're doing is saying, you, you should put this in this detachment. You should do mm-hmm. this. You should add this in here. Uh, you're not you're not best using your three detachments or whatever. And not everybody wants to hear that. They just want to take what they want to take. But when they get to, let's say they win round one and then in a tournament and then they get to round two, then and then they get blown off the table. They never get the opportunity to use their stuff. Mm-hmm. And because they, they went second or had to get in range or whatever. And with things like prepare positions, you're now, I mean, you have a lot like, I mean, you're 17% more likely to still be on the table after the end of your opponent's first round. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I if mean you're... just imagine all the bright lenses coming from those new Eldar flyers that are hitting you on turn one. Now your vehicles can save that on a six. It's better All than nothing. Right. Yeah. That's a, <laughs> look at it. It is. What a, it is. It, well, it's kind of that's funny. That's an infinite um, percent chance. Better infinite, than yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if you think, look at guardsmen. All right. A guardsman with a five up save, you know, in going to what, a four up save? Dude, that's. Oh, I, I, I think it's fantastic for guards. And that's what I feel like. Guard, the, the when you're taking a 10 man for- unit, you can get into cover most of the time. But this yeah. is, this is basically buying insurance. When you've got things like random deployment still, like you, you could roll up to the best table in the world and then get some kind of weird, get a deployment that doesn't put you in any of the cover. You know? <laughs> I love games. Yep. I love games where you have to place your objectives before you know where your deployment zone is. I think that it's just I, I oh, yeah. love it because it's always like there is just this game of like, do I put that objective near him knowing that I don't know if I'm going to be there or not? I, I love games like that. I, I believe in a tournament that fixed place objectives are where it's at. I also believe yeah, I'm, that I'm, I'm fully on with that. when now, I think this is the choice, and I'm, but I, I lean towards fixed deployment in tournaments also. But yeah, I know I mean, it's, it's fair. Yeah. Like no random deployments before. No random deployment zones. No random. Uh, I mean, it does put some purpose in the, no. in, in making the missions. Yeah. yeah. I don't, yeah, so but I like, think that you should. But whatever. That's, that's a, that's a point for another conversation. There have been many times when I've walked up to a table and like, oh man, that's great. There's a building here. There's a building directly yeah. on the opposite side. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then we 
roll like some weird, uh, I shouldn't say weird's a bad term. Then we roll something <laughs> that puts both deployment zones outside of anything that can take advantage of the cover. Une- unexpected. Unexpected yeah. deployment yeah. is what yeah. you <laughs> Way less optimal. You know. Yeah. One when of you, you walk up to it. head style deployments. Yeah. You walk up to it and you're control like, control this point. is great. You know, you think of Dawn of War. You always think of Dawn of War, right? Like you're looking at it and then all of a sudden you're, uh, what is that? What not the, you know, oh, the we you just don't get Vanguard. Everybody's yeah. fine. And then you get Vanguard. <laughs> yeah. As soon as Vanguard, you yeah. the, the redheaded stepchild of deployment zones. How many times have, like I've, been at tournaments like major tournaments and got vanguard and the dude's like you want to just you know play dawn of war <laughs> yeah that's collusion that. ricky that's, that, that's another Listen, point anytime at, you've got player place objectives random stuff player and place and terrain and then you run into collusion collusion it's, a, it's an avenue for collusion that yeah. that that a table away. No, that's harmless. Whatever. And you're playing on like table 97. So like, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Um, my tables, collusion is not a factor. <laughs> but you're having what could potentially be a different play experience than someone one table over, and you oh, don't yeah. you don't yeah. always want that. Whatever. That's yeah. a different again different conversation. Yeah. But now with this stratagem. You, everyone can potentially benefit. So whatever. Let's say you're still taking three Storm Ravens if you want. Or or you get the guy that want to play, plays with three Storm Hawks that every time he, he shows up, they get shot off the table before he gets to play with two of them. Now a lot more bad. now a, a lot more realistic that you'll able you'll you'll be able to play with them in turn two, which is gonna make everyone happier and ter- give some people some a better win. It has to give people a better win percentage. You're just saying that because you know I bought two Storm Hawks. <laughs> I mean, I think we just proven that, that people <laughs> people just do some things sometimes. Yeah, no, no, I, I'm I'm 100 percent with you. It's it, it's kind of funny. Just I, I'm a collector as much as I'm a gamer, so I like to have the the things that I couldn't have before. And one of the one of the big issues I had, and even on some of our author interviews, Paul, I talked to authors is like, you you put a a, a Stormhawk interceptor or a storm or a storm talon gunship in this in this book. You know that's not in the codex, right? So it just felt right to have them. But w- w- what you're saying is is definitely true. We, I, I, I'm a little bit torn between what you said earlier, Ricky. So far as like this made codex armies better, uh, I'm not 100 percent on board with that. I, I would feel like it made some codex armies better. Uh, maybe some stuff like uh, yeah, definitely codex stuff like better. He means dark angels. <laughs> well, I always look at it from a dark angel standpoint, of course. But what well, I'm glad what you're staying I'm, consistent with that. Yeah. Now, what the reason I say this, okay, and the reason I think that it makes like mono factions better is simply by the virtue of uh, command point generation has gone away. So I'm not. I'm not nearly as, you know, it's not nearly as necessary for me to take that uh, Astra Militarum tax, you know, that all Imperial soup armies had to have to keep generating command points. I don't have to take guard to get all the command points um, because now other armies aren't going to be generating nearly as many command points. So when I take Dark Angels and the only thing I have to get command points is Grand Strategist, that's not nearly as terrible now that other armies don't have as much generation or generating capability. So it's not as bad. So by the well, virtue of that alone, our single book, such as Dark Angels, did in fact get better. And on top of that, with Vex getting more expensive and all of these super well, tricks. Well, it's not only that it's more expensive, expensive, too, it has a limitation. Like you could cons- – someone that's just angling for getting that stratagem in their army list, which – is valid, uh, you know, whatever. That's that's the reality. It's it's powerful. You should, if if that is what you are inclined to do, uh, you you have the potential to turn it off. So with your your Razorback heavy bolter Razorback that lived into turn two, where it's never done that before. Yeah, <laughs> you could conceivably kill that one unit of Cabal of the Blackheart. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and, now, uh, and, so the, I think the they're reasons more competitive. That you take the loyal thirty two. Aren't aren't going to be command point generation, but the the fact of the matter is that they create a better screen than anything for an equivalent points cost in the marine book, and in terms of board control and and better survivability because of the stratagem. I I do not see the uh, loyal thirty two disappearing from any list because oh, it's no, still absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I ain't saying it's going away. I'm just saying, no, by but, the but for the it, people it, that don't yeah. choose to to use that, they are instantly more viable. Yeah, us us mono faction players, 
just got a little bit of a boost. Well, but you know me, Ricky. You know I, I want that to be to be the truth. You know, I I, I want the single faction codexes to be able to shake it in with with all of the the mixed faction detachment armies. So, you know, I'm. I want I want that to be true. I I think that's great. I especially am am excited for what it could do to improve the survivability of some of the stuff that I like to bring. Uh, but you know I I'm not seeing that as still as the as the hyper optimized choice. Oh God, no! It, 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 no, no, no! Please do not take it as me saying <laughs> that. Me taking that's not, yeah, that's not what we're saying at all. Yeah, no, no, I'm just don't saying, put words in my mouth, Chris. I yeah. didn't say it's optimized. I just said <laughs> that. I'm saying it's, it got okay. you made it very case for that. It got better. I am not saying it is the best. No, please, God, Eric, do not go by pure dark angels and tell them Ricky sent you. Uh, <laughs> you you're doing, you're better off, but you're not. I still don't think it is. It is the gospel. Well, I think anything well, I, that I, gives you something that to everyone, the game got buffed in general. Like everything got buffed across the board and some things got, well, everything but the f- couple things that we talked about, they got uh, a little bit of reduction. But you know, what we'll see is is fewer of the, they didn't go away. There's just fewer times you can use them over the course of the game. And I think that's that's what, when, when they first come out with stratagems, that's what I imagine. I think that's what we all imagined was like, here's these... Once or twice per uh, per game moments where you have to make a critical decision and you you need to manage your resources and decide this is the moment I want to use this ability right I mean that's that's yeah to me yeah, what I'm, was exciting right there with you. yeah that's what was exciting about command points when we were first told that these were going to be a thing and what they were going to do is like. Uh, when do I risk it when do I uh, have to make that decision to use these command points and it was very disheartening, especially like, um, uh, you know, as, as an Imperial Knight player, when I've got like, uh, well, now, now I have, you know, pretty good, but like at one point I had like, <laughs> I had what, five to my name, something like that. And here it was, I was, I think it was less than that. You probably, yeah, like, yeah, yeah three, that's, that's, four, that three, sounds yeah. optimistic. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and here it was, like, I got like three re rolls, or I could rotate island shells three times again. And then here is my opponent using, you know, you know, six command points a turn or something, you know, just something bonkers. And it didn't feel like we were playing the same game, even as, you know, Dark Angels players and stuff like that, where, where you're getting like a, what you would expect to be like a normal amount of command points. You, you're still, by the end of the game, you're done. You know, you're done with command points, and there is nothing more disheartening to finish a game with zero command points, and your opponent is still over there trying to burn them off. Uh, yeah. And it, you're just not, you're not playing the same game. And so now I think, you know, yeah, those big, those big tricks are, are still there. You can do it, but you're going to do it once, you know, or or maybe twice if you if you go crazy somehow. So there's stuff there that you can still do, and you you, you can still pull those things off. You're just not going to do it the entirety of the game, which is well, what, and which I, is fine. <laughs> yeah, it is. I also great. think it that is, the, the command point regeneration that's there is still going to make a little bit of difference. I don't think it's worthless to have it now. Just you're capped at six per game, but that's still six extra command points. So it's still there. It's still going to exist. It's just not. I mean, Six it's not extra the command points is two knights getting back up. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, I hate that trick. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. All right, let's take a quick break, and we'll come back, uh, talk about the new sponsor. sponsor. Really excited. Uh, and then we'll do the rest of the show. Be right back. Swanky. You're listening to Forge the Narrative. Hey, everybody. We are back. I still got Chris and Ricky here. You poor souls. I want the scramjet. The scrapjet. I need scrap it. Scrapjet. Oh, that video scrap is glorious. Well, let me talk about this. Is the we are welcoming a new sponsor for the month of October. Discount Games Inc. Discount Games Inc. offers Games Workshop products at fifteen percent off the suggested retail at www.discountgamesinc.com. Uh, you can send an email to j discountgamesinc.com for details on how you can save even more money. Check out their website. I'm going to put the link in the show notes. Jay, when I, when he was setting this up with me, he was incredibly responsive. I can only imagine that translates into how he, he deals w- with customers as well. Check out their website. It's not just Games Workshop stuff. They have tons of products. They even run their own podcast for War Machine. So check them out. These guys had enough faith in us to advertise on our show. Please check out their website and look out, look at the stuff they've got. Place an order, especially for things that are coming out. We know we got orcs coming sometime this month. We don't know when. We don't know where. We were just talking about that scrap jet. Eh. 
I, I'm, look, the whole time you've been talking, I have been staring. I had the video paused, and I've just been staring at the at the front of the scrap jet. Like <laughs> that's going to be in my Dark Angels army. I don't care. Well, Somehow, did, did you pre-order it there. as soon as I don't know if storage were taking them yet or not? Uh, but this it's going to be a big release. I mean, you could tell that there so we we only know what, what's up there on the on the websites and the community stuff right now. But that uh, that parody ad is a stroke <sighs> of genius. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was like so corporate, you know, that it was. They they nailed it. They nailed this like corporate Getty images, just cliche vibe, and then they hit you with it. And I screamed out loud when I saw. I was like, "This is beautiful. well." It's just like the car yeah. one they did before. Yeah, yeah. Where they're like smashing the old truck with the hammer <laughs> or whatever it was so the the war buggy. Yeah, I am. Uh, like, it's gold. You know what is so great about this orc release? And I, I don't know if that's a. I mean, first off, the orc release is going to be. It, you know, it's huge. It's great. But what what does it say about like the past orc releases and the way poor orcs have just had a, a tough road? Orcs okay, they have not orcs are not as disenfranchised as everyone would they, like to believe. They kind of okay, here's and here here's what I'm gonna say. Non forty K players are excited for us. That for for forty K players to finally be getting this like big orc release. That's yeah. People, yeah. And people in my the love for orcs even, is real. Yeah. People who don't even play forty K are excited for the orc players. I don't play orcs. I'm over the moon right now for people. Like but people, I am running up to them, like just excited I for agree, them. I agree with that. And orcs, by the way, they have had periods when they were like I think oh, yeah. their their yeah. codex back in uh, they in fourth edition. I think for most of fourth edition, they still had a third edition codex that didn't even have a summary of their weapons in the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think Dark Eldar have the have the the badge for the oldest codex yeah with that they, they did i think they went 12 years without getting a new codex something oh, like that a million years when yeah, in gaming terms 12 might as well be all the years yeah. three yeah. light years they went without getting a, a codex <laughs> it's just it's uh it's exciting i'm just excited to see orcs because orc players there's there's just something about orc players not the ones that scream wah right next to me those always get me but the 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 guys who spend hours and hours just customizing every one of their buggies and just going to town on all these little bits and everything on them. And, and they're so proud of their conversions. And it, it's just so fun. I never see an orc army and don't get excited about something that they've done. You know, it's it, it, those, there's something about orc players who like can go to a tournament knowing that they're probably not going to do great because they're, they're just not there yet. Well, they're operating without all the strategies. Exactly. There yet. And, well, what do and you think the immediate moment. effect of prepare positions is? Because we didn't, uh, I think we, we kind of glossed over this in the, in the last segment, but the, one of the reasons that prepare positions is so good, like when you're, when you're taking Marines or, or, or three 10 man units, a guard, not that big of a whatever, deal. You, you have enough space to put your dudes in cover most yeah. of the time. When you've got a 30 man squad, if, if you mounted them on 32 millimeter bases, they don't fit anywhere. It's, it's, and gosh, yep. what, most orcs are what a six up save. So we, we've, we've doubled their save. Uh, that's huge. Well, it works uh, so, against, you know, how you chew up, you know, you're not killing a bunch of boys with the last cannons. You're killing them with, a, with assault cannons, uh, or, um, bolter. Heavy you know, bolters. Yeah, Listen, that kind of stuff. Right now, and I, I think we, we talked about this before the show, uh, with orcs coming out, with prepared positions, with, with, uh, with all the things that are, are not prepared positions, but with with the command point farming going away and everything, and with the most importantly the change to fly, and with orcs coming out, you cannot tell me that you're not going to see more uh, bolter aggressors on the table because that is how you get through orcs, and that's how you're going to get through all those guardsmen screening uh, those uh, those Lehman Russes. I, I love aggressors. Now, I love the, aggressors. the interceptors. Yeah. Inter- sorry, intercessors. Ince- interceptors. Interceptors and the yeah. interceptors. Yeah, Bolter, Bolter oh, I would love to do to do a segment yeah. on on those. But I mean, um, the the top orc player in the ITC is in my area. I, I spent some time with him this weekend, and it's it's interesting. Like because he, he's a diehard mono faction person. Of course, you have to be as an orc player, but he's he's a diehard into his faction. He brought something like fifteen thousand points of orcs to this apocalypse game that I ran, and it's all painted to a very high standard. A lot of them are custom pieces. Every, everything's beautiful, and he loves it. And I just know as soon as he gets the tools that he's been missing, he's going to be wrecking people's faces with them. Well, that's the thing. It's like these guys have been, you know, playing in a drought. And, you know, 
you're you're playing in that and you're trying to stay competitive so you're you're doing all the tricks you're you're it forces you to be a better player when you're playing down a codex right and now all of a sudden when you get this stuff uh <laughs> those guys are just going to like leap past some players because if you're halfway competitive with with an index army and then all of a sudden you get your tools and that you know and god willing uh, the the codex doesn't you know do something crazy but all of a sudden you've got stratagems you've got uh, more tools in your tool belt that you're only going to get better you know they're going to be able to do something that there's going to be orc chapter tactics the clans are going to get some kind of rule you're going to well, get a better. bonus yeah. you're going to get yeah you, you're going to have two two or three pages of stratagems plus some some unique stratagems for whatever clan you pick yeah it's going to be. Well, one really of the awesome. things about playing without all of the stratagems and things and playing for a long time is it really sharpens up your your tight game things, your movement, exactly. yeah. your deployment. Like they're they're stepping into this with all of the the sharpened finesse of somebody who's had to milk out every last bit of advantage they could. It's like and those tra- those runners when you know when they train with like that parachute on them when they're training their sprinting <laughs> and then they cut it loose. That's about to the, be orc players. Orc Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. And you mentioned uh, squeezing out and eking out games with just sheer tactics. Uh, the tactics are going to change a little bit now with uh, with the, the way flight moves and or the way charge moves and assault and stuff. You're going to see a lot of people moving, positioning, being able to claim, like say if they're playing progressive objectives, locking down those points a little bit e- a little bit easier on their side people are gonna have to get real creative about how they dig them out and that's what's going to lead i think to the next phase in list design you think uh valhalla and conscripts are going to see a resurgence just the big conscript lines you know i i could see those coming back yes i mean uh, it- kind of silly not to think those are not coming well, back you know there's been some changes to things like forward operatives okay so we talked about the game moving going longer so there will be fewer Turn one closeouts. Right. No, turn one cripplings. Yeah. For for lots of reasons. The prepare positions that we talked about, that's now I don't mean it's always gonna work. Obviously it's just it's just cover save, but it does give things covered they wouldn't have had it before. It changes the math a lot in some ways, not a not a ton in others, especially with things in AP, whatever. Uh, but then things like the forward operative changes, uh, the stuff that allowed people to start right next to outside of nine inches, be able to move their six or eight or whatever they would do and then charge. So essentially they're, they're going to launch their charge from three inches away from whatever your your screen was or your back line or whatever. That's been slowed down. So now the game is going to a two and three turn game where you, people will be able to fortify their positions get posted up on objectives, move their screens into place uh, in a way that we haven't seen really uh, in six, eight months, nine months. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how things how, how things work with all of the all of the changes. You know, one, one of the sort of big impacts that uh, the Custodes players are going through right now is one of their more powerful stratagems. You know, let's let's you know ignore the fact that stratagem command point regeneration has disappeared. Then now one of their most useful stratagems that lets their bikes countercharge somebody is obstructed by their own models. Like what kind of positioning stuff do you have <laughs> to be able to do to to get that off now? And things aren't going to be as safe. And you command point regeneration hasn't well. gone away. Command point uh, manufacturing has <laughs> gone away. Yeah, it's it's the triple of command points and, and it has been neutered. So the, the Movement to your point, like positioning and movement is going to be so much more important. Where before you could have your your bikes behind your screen and they could still get to where they needed to go. Now you're gonna to have to put them to the side or something. You're gonna to have to find somewhere else to put them so they can intercept that charge, and that's going to mean putting them somewhere where they'll be in danger from something else. It could be. It's going to, it's going to be really fun to to start doing this. That's that's the kind of stuff that I like. I like the movement phase. I actually think the game is won in the movement phase when you're playing on equal terms. Yep. And this is no different. So things that can, I, I think things that can move real far, like jet bikes, still like the, um, I don't know why I can't remember the jump back. <laughs> primary space ring names. I think Inceptor, I, you own no, them. <laughs> I know, but I've trained Inceptors. myself to call them something else. <laughs> well, yeah. Not that, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> you made that joke last year. Oh, I do. I just I, so now it's every time I go to say it, that's what I think about saying. Uh, yeah, there, there, there. Yeah, there's so many units that 
so, some units just got better, some units got maybe worse, and then other units just kind of changed the way you're going to use them. And I, those are the ones that I'm I'm most excited about, are the ones that now you're just going to use them differently, and that that's that's cool. Yeah, I agree. This is I think a welcome thing that everyone's going to benefit from, and that's and I, that's what's getting lost in some of the, the let's say the comments on the internet is that this really does benefit most players. Benefits Except flip belts. <laughs> give me, give, give, give us flip belts. Can, come on, guys. As as a community, can we agree that Harlequin's flip belts should still just work? Come on. Okay, but come okay, on. Th- yes, they should. <laughs> but what's the limit? How do you put some? How Harlequin. do you make it not clunky to make them do what they need to do, but don't somehow create a situation to you know, that, that they're trying to prevent? Like I don't, I, I don't know if we're going to solve that right now, but that's oh, that's the on, way to yeah. approach it. I think that's yeah. That's, like, what do you? How do you make it not clunky? And still do what they need, what they, what they should do. And I do agree, but that's the beauty of 40k, or that's the beauty of games like this, is that you could have a very restrictive rule and then you can make limita- or, or exceptions and then things get to break that rule and that's what makes them special. Yeah. And flip belt should break that rule, Paul. I- <laughs> I'm not I saying only, they don't. I only I'm say not saying this they shouldn't. halfway into building a Harlequin army. That's the only reason I'm we saying We told you that. to only build the bikes. You did. You did. In fairness, you did say that. <laughs> you just, just play the bike. But and that's that was still good like advice. That was yeah, advice no. then. That's advice now. <laughs> that's so bad. But it's like, and that's the that's the poor thing. And like just, just the bummer about Harlequins is it was such a cool army the way they just – flipped over everything on the battlefield. It was such a, a neat way that they, they just moved over whatever they wanted to, and that was their thing. And that's what almost made you want to put them on the table uh, other than the bikes. You know, actually put a troop on the table. And now that they can't do that, it's like, why would you ever, ever put a Harlequin troop on the table not putting, you know, four uh, fusion pistols in their hands and putting them in the back of of a transport and just flying them around and shooting from the back. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a kick to the junk there for those, but you know what? A lot of armies got a kick to the junk with that. So we, we will adjust and we'll, we'll figure I think something. That is better for now for tournaments. This is where I, I kind of, I'm conflicted because tournaments, you know, we got to play on a time limit. And so if we increase the time of the, of most games, what does that do? I don't know. It takes us back to the chess clock. Um, solution or discussion. I don't know what the answer to that is. Um, but it's going to be great for all, for all games. Games are going to go longer. People are going to get to develop their strategies more. And I think that's just going to be fun. So we'll see. I mean, all we can do is, uh, sit back and watch. But if we, if yeah, we, if we know, Wild West right now, right? yeah, if we know anything about 40k, it's in give us, give us 30 days and we'll, we'll usually know. <laughs> <laughs> give us, well, give we've us, got you know, yeah, give us one open GT. coming up. So there we go, there we go. Give us one GT, and we'll find out real quick uh, how it's going to play out. Yeah, so. and the stuff with like turn two, and then coming in from your deployment zone. It, it's, it's like people find ways. Like the the shadow sword doesn't care where it comes on the table. Yeah, no, no, it's still going to shoot you. <laughs> oh, but I'm still I'm pumped. I think this is the FAQ is largely once we can once we get past the differences of things that that behaved a certain way prefag. Yeah, I went through all my stages of grief, and now I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm gonna put that little bit of vocal fry in the end of it because. <laughs> Yeah, I, that's about as best I can do. But I, you know, I'm, I'm, ex, I'm always excited to see uh, the game change up a little because it's, it's always fun to see what somebody's going to do next. Um, also, my buddy used to table me with that Blood Angels House Raven guard combo, so I'm very excited <laughs> to see him not get to do that anymore. So. Uh, he can still do it. He just can't do it as often. He's going to do it. He's going to do it once. That's it. <laughs> he's, then he's out. So. <laughs> I'm excited. That's actually pretty strong. Although I do, I like the uh, the the other the Tyrannus or whatever getting 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 back alive. The House Raven is rerolling ones. Oh well, we we were talking about one of uh, our favorite things to talk about was a um, House Terran Gallant turned into a Knight Seneschal. So it come out with something like what was it like thirty two attacks or something like that a turn <laughs> if you did it right thirty two stomps or something like that. We're that, like, sounds, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, you know, I said I could play. I was like, I can't get through horrors. And it's like uh, somebody's like, you should just play House Terran. I was like, no. Because I can't play a yellow house Terran, but uh, gosh, it's hard to argue with thirty-two. I was like, I could, I could have a buddy, right? Like, I'm sure these Hawk Shroud guys know a house Terran 
dude. They, right? Yeah, they hang out at the same clubs. And yeah, stuff. like they they drink at the same bar or something. And but <laughs> like I could put one in there. <laughs> yeah, speaking of alternate color schemes, I know you just kind of casually mentioned that, but I I painting my Yvrain. I've been borrowing your Yvrain, fond of painting Yvrain. A complex model. Uh, way more complex than it looks. She's got a lot going on. Well, she's wearing a dress with a bodysuit under it, and there are Eldar runes on the bodysuit that are raised, but still within that kind of sleek. It it's just not easy to paint. Yeah, yeah. not as easy as it looks, especially when you get and you find out she got like a she's like a, a an ankle she's bracelet. Got- Got a kitty cat. Yeah, that thing, which is cool. I'll, pro- <laughs> I'll probably you. I might even use go crazy with that, like that that hex flame. We'll see. Now I'm all crazy about the new the new paints, but I'm painting her up in a uh, Beltane color scheme, not the color scheme that's on the box. She's from that craft world. This is I'm, I got this idea. This is her. She's in mourning for the craft world, so she's wearing the colors. Whatever, don't judge me. That's my lore. Hey, look, dude. I mean, <laughs> it's called Forge the Narrative. Okay, you just did it. No, no, like, no. <laughs> It's called Paul. Force the narrative. Force the narrative. <laughs> She's from the craft world. No, I'm I'm with you. So using all these different techniques, the paint, I want to make it like a velvet dress. Oh my goodness, it's very difficult. <laughs> I think I'm just complaining at this point. <laughs> I'm half giggling because of, you remember coming to America when the king comes into the barber shop and the dude reaches over and starts rubbing the lion that he's wearing across. He's like, "What is this velvet? It's beautiful." That, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just I was giggling at that. Yeah, I, but I, I paint up with all the colors. I love scheme. that you're concerned going. about the texture. Like, your what material dress do I want to give her? Not just what color, but what material. Well, the texture is important. That's one of these things. <laughs> and, well, where I was going is I'm looking for tutor- tutorials on how to paint your brain. And, yeah. and believe me, I'm not hobby shaming anyone. But there are some. There's a dearth of, <laughs> of tutorials, of good tutorials on how to paint your brain. So, it's so funny how you run into that, though, right? Like, there, there's there, there's always, like, that one model that you're trying to work on that apparently no one has ever bothered to <laughs> to put up a good tutorial for. There's one really amazing one that's in a different color scheme and also an alternate color scheme that just didn't work for me. Uh, but there's some things, you know, there's things you can take away from, from every tutorial. Yeah. I think. But this one was like shot. The one I was talking about that's, it's just not shot well. It wasn't shot in a way that I could return. It was on a, it was with a cell phone and it wasn't even in landscape mode. <laughs> Savage. That, no. I just, I hope, I, I hope you gave it a thumbs down. I did not. I'm never going to do that because. <laughs> I'm never going to do that to a creator. I think I'm saying I'm not hobby shaming anybody. It's just where I'm saying is I've um, encountered uh, very few tutorials. Uh, Games Workshop has some tutorials, but it's not for the whole thing. Like they don't say this is how you paint her face makeup or whatever because she got face paint on in the picture, and I'm terrified of paint. That I've showed you. I showed you guys the picture. I don't. I don't want to jack that face up. <laughs> There's pressure there. Yeah. In the white, the white dwarf. If you guys don't already get it and don't subscribe or pick it up from time to time, you absolutely should because there are so many painting tutorials in there. Even if you don't read a single battle report, the paint splatters, they don't skip steps anymore. They give you step by step by step. And sometimes it's different than what you see in the, in the, even in the GW tutorials. Uh, but it's, I really appreciate it. I went all the way back in the database, as you call it, Ricky, <laughs> of white dwarfs. Back to February 2017, where they had the uh, uh, the Triumvirate in the White Dwarf. Yeah. And it gives a little bit more info on how to paint uh, Yvrain and the other stuff as well. Now, I cover the, the um, a lot of the stuff didn't apply, but I'm looking for ways to make, get that skin tone, that face, and her swords. And when you're looking at the model, and after you already put it together and you got it primed and, you know... <laughs> It's hard to tell what's a bone, you know, what's a, uh, what's part of this, what's part of that, until you start getting in there and painting it and seeing some really high res photos really helped me, help me get there. But a lot of the, te- the techniques that they talk about in the White Dwarf are focused on texture. And that is important if you, t- if you don't take anything away from this talk, is that working that texture into your models, uh, is instantly makes them look better than they did before. It is kind of funny how, like, when you look at a piece of velvet, you can kind of feel it with your eyes before you actually touch it. Like that's that's the kind of thing we're talking about. Yeah. And and let's just be honest, velvet's super fun to touch. <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking more like Scarlett O'Hara. She's never going hungry again. That's what. <laughs> I'm like, where can I get this between elegance and curtains? That was that's where I was at with this model. 
Uh, this, this is the best thing about this hobby is we're having we are literally having a conversation about dress color. Like it's it's important. It's the, it is when you're it is a certain look. And it's a huge it's a huge part of that model. You know, like that whole train behind her gown. I don't know how she fits in a wave serpent, and a primaris won't fit in a rhino. You you can't tell me that dress <laughs> has not got caught in the door of the wave serpent. It's like in the Watchmen, you know, or like no capes, or so that, yeah. I guess it's a uh, it's incredible, in, uh, Incredibles, Incred- but in the Watchmen they've got that guy who's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's about to get sucked through a uh, an intake on a wave serpent. <laughs> Hemlock cruising too low to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Gets caught on a tree or something. She's gone. Well, I mean, at least you'll sur- you'll sur- somebody a soul burst, right? So it's- that'd be good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been a it's been a really fun model to to, to paint. I mean, again, it, I, I know it, it it's more complex than it looks. Like she has blades on her on her head with gems on the blades. She's got all these soul stones all over. her. There's just so much going on on that model. Like, it is a lot. Like, I feel like... (laughs) Just trying to do it justice. This is one of the ones you have to paint on. You know, we're talking about Rodigus and the Great Unclean one, where you could possibly maybe skip a couple details. I I mean, you got to paint them all on this model. Yeah, I don't don't see how you could get away with it. I I think because she's, you know, at at the end of the day, she's a little space elf, right? So it's... The model's so small that when you're looking at it, you're taking it all in, right? Like, Rodigus... He's so big, you get this big overall impression of him. You can't see all of him at one time. <laughs> right, right. So like you're you're not you can't take it all in, but when you pick her up, like I can see the whole model, right? So you you can't really just skimp on it. Plus, why would you? That's a cool model. No, it, it's very it's yeah. very cool. Yeah, it's it's a it has a little bit of everything on it. You got your got your power weapon. This is probably the second best power weapon I've ever painted. I'm I'm just I'm gonna be honest with you, that that model is a combination of everything I hate to paint. Like, <laughs> there's there's gems on there. There's hair. There's skin. There's, there's gems in the hair, Ricky. There's gems in the hair. <laughs> oh my gosh, there is. Oh my gosh, right there. Yeah. You know, like the 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 gems everywhere the I could probably deal with the I think I could pull off the dress. I think I could do that. Uh but gosh, there's there is a lot on that model. Good luck, dude. Yeah, have fun with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing what I can. Getting yeah. good. Wait, uh, I'll, I'll uh, some I, I want to paint one of those and, and an incarn. I, I want to paint the incarn so badly. I'm just gonna chop off that doofy horn and replace it with something. Right. I don't know. Yeah, right. There you go. From yeah. the, I, I can see something from like uh, the Sylvaneth or something going on there instead and being much cooler. You could put Give, just could put some more hair or something. Yeah, yeah a potato. <laughs> <Come over. laughs> <laughs> Just, hey, Fulgrim, can I borrow your fop? Ugh, <laughs> uh, Fulgrim. I mean, I have to worry about a guy who's so vain like Fulgrim, and then, like, that's the hair hair choice he goes with, all right? Like, that was, that was a little weird for me. He he thinks mm-hmm. he's beautiful. Own it, you know? Confidence. It, it's mostly confidence, guys. <laughs> Just remember that. It, it, it only gets more true as you kill people who disagree with you. I, I think I think that holds true. Let's Solid. not espouse that as the gospel for our our listeners, but for maniacal problems. Yeah, 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 one hundred percent. In the context of Fulgrim, that makes perfect <laughs> sense. We're talking about the thirty k model, of course, not to go too far off the uh, off the mark. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, or or any of his art, really. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I'm still very excited about forty k, and um, this this month. I, there have been a whole lot of lead up on this orc stuff. I can't imagine it's going to disappoint. Yeah, man, it's going to be great. Think, do, well, here's the thing: it could. No, nah, every codex has been playable. Every single codex that's come out so far has been, been playable. <laughs> Grey Knights. Uh, yeah, yeah, except Grey Knights. Everybody, take your hat off for Grey Knights. Dread Knight, uh, Grandmaster Dread Knights, real good. Okay, so codex, let's codex, codex Grandmaster codex, Dread Knights. Grandmaster Dread Knight. Yeah, like. When's the last time you've seen two a, gray knights in one? <laughs> what else do you need? Uh, you have a gray knight choices. wearing uh, another gray knight. <laughs> let's let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's like Tesla other... designed a baby carrier. Yeah. Let's see some actual play from a gray knight army instead of uh, just your uh, supreme command detachment of uh, three. 
<laughs> Great no, master. That, that you don't get the points for that. It's just a patrol. It's just five. Oh, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> it, the worst part about it is instead of like coming in and fixing the Grey Knights, they're just going to jack the points up on the Grand Master <laughs> and just make it worse. You know, that's 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 my fear. My my you buddy. Clock. You know, well, yeah, my my poor friend. I, I think I've talked about it, but he has been a Grey Knight player from day one. He is just obsessed with loves on pure Grey Knight player, refuses to play anything else. Well, <laughs> we finally convinced him to branch out and try something else. Guess what he picked? Blood Angels. And, uh, <laughs> oh, you mentioned this guy yeah, before. Yeah, and sure enough, the Blood Angels just got hit and hit and hit. Well, we started an escalation league, uh, uh, well, I think last month, just, just this past month. And he decided he was going to start something new and, and try to get something going. Well, he he decided he was going to he loved the uh, Adeptus uh, or the Mechanicus models, right? So he picked up Adeptus Mechanicus, and sure enough, the Stygis stratagem got hit after he just bought a bunch of Electro Priests. And so it's if you are mad that your Codex is getting FAQ'd, I need y'all to understand that it is my friend's fault. And so <laughs> from now on, if he yeah. picks up a new army, I will let anyone know what. It is. That you is, all can for immediately years, stop playing. Yeah. For years, yeah. I wouldn't like mind Eldar in likes. Germany or whatever, right? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't there like this octopus who like climbs into the tank of like a sports team and can more than yeah, often <laughs> accurately predict who's going to win the next uh, football match or soccer heard, for, yeah. for us yeah. American clubs? Guys, let's go ahead and wrap this up. You guys want to cover anything else before we get out of here? Uh, well, just I'm, I just, just want to say Paul the octopus. Paul the octopus. Sorry, Paul the you. octopus. <laughs> okay. uh, I finally got my t- kill team book and I am so stoked to dive into it. Uh, I I can hardly wait. So uh, maybe we've, especially where we're doing some kill team list building on the Facebook page, I might I might sneak in there, look at some ideas, and, and figure out some some kill team stuff. I'm just waiting for waiting for the next batch of models to arrive. So. I'm just excited for you that Utah finally got their first shipment of kill team, Chris, and that's that's huge. <laughs> that's huge. You guys are gonna have a blast. Just wait till it catches on there. Swear, Still haven't made me swear, Ricky. Still haven't made me swear. You guys have rest, y'all's night. We'll I'm see you next here. week. <laughs> Good night, everybody.